This is hydrogen tap. What you're looking at here is the cell that I had in the Honda. I'm going to take it apart. It's been about a week since I've had it in there. And I'm going to check it out to see what is going on with the cell. I got a lot of emails from people saying that I would probably see dirty stainless steel on the inside by now. I don't believe that's the case. I've done too many tests in the lab. As a matter of fact, that was the reason for all these lab tests, was to prove or disprove the stainless steel. Also, we've come a long way, and now I'm not using the tap water in there. And uh, one of the things I did have when I was using the tap water was a lot of goop inside. A lot of problem with it last year. Now I'm using distilled water. The lab is showing that I, there's no residue whatsoever, maybe a discoloration a little bit. But, so we're going to see what the inside of this looks like after a week of use. One of the things I have reported, which is really interesting, is when I use this cell, this is cell that's being used with the, with the gasoline. I barely have to put my foot on the gas pedal to get it going. There's no question I'm getting better system mileage, if you want. I can't say mileage because I haven't tested for that yet, but I can definitely see the difference in the engine. Barely have to put my foot on the gas in order to get the car to run. So let's open this up doesn't do any good if we open it up and find a lot of garbage inside. You're looking at it the same time I was. It's straight out of the tube. And it looks very clean. Ah, to say the least, it looks clean. I had a one email saying I should should not use the copper wire to the cell because of the garbage that would be on the copper. I'm looking at that wire. There's really nothing on that either. Those crimp sets that are on the connection points they're a form of uh, non-magnetic metal. And look at the inside. You can see this is really a clean system here. If I hadn't seen it or didn't know that it was coming from the inside of the car engine compartment, compartment I would not believe this. It is really clean. We'll take a look at the inside of the tube. And, ah, it couldn't be any cleaner than that. One of the problems I've had is the seal on the bottom. Since I put it on dry, I've had to tighten it down. Once it gets wet and saturated, it's got to be tightened down so you can lose your water system there. Taking a look at the sensor down there. I just, I just messed up the sensor myself. That's the only thing I'm worried about is those are gold tip mono plugs. The only thing in there that could possibly go wrong is the rubber between it. I guess we're going to find out whether there was any problem with that. And as you can see, there's the sensor on the outside. Everything looks fantastically clean. The glue that's securing the ports is tight. 
everything on this is tight. I noticed that someone else had put out a video showing that they were now putting water around their cylinder and they were cooling it down. Actually, somebody sent me that. I I imagine it's a it's a good idea or could be a good idea, but to be honest with you, the as the water gets hotter, you get better conductivity. So I don't know as it's really bad. The only thing they did point out in the video was that they're not getting condensation, but I'm not even sure that's a bad thing either. I don't think anybody is at this point. You can see the seal on the bottom. It's really thin because it's waterlogged. And I had to tighten it down. I either am going to put two seals on the bottom or I'm going to wet this one and make sure it's really wet. The bottom of these, or these tubes are cut, precision cut. So as long as it's down there tight, the seal should be good. But remember, if you put them in dry, then as they get waterlogged, it's going to have to be tightened down. The only reason I use a seal and I don't glue these to the base, and eventually I probably will, is that I want to be able to take it apart. Matter of fact, that's the whole reason for the 3LR1000 series. You can go to my website, hydrogentap.com, and you can see the cell if you're interested. Actually, I have a system where it's all spread out for you. These plates are really in good condition. What I'm going to do is test them out now that we've taken them out, put them in some distilled water on another tube, and let's see what it looks like. The cell in the car has been operating with less than 15 volts. I mean 15 amps at between 12 and 14 volts depending on your ch the charging system of the hot Honda. Sometimes it goes all the way up to 14. That's because of the charging circuit. But I'm running uh, about 15 amps. And it really seems to be taking care of the engine really well. Barely have to put my foot on the throttle at all. I'm putting lye in here. This is what I'm using in my car is lye and distilled water. And you saw there was no garbage in that water, and no garbage on the cell itself. It was really clean. So evidently the lye is doing a very good job. I got through installing the water sensor today, and it's working pretty well. And I'm getting ready to put a switch on there that an automatic switch so the system will be cut off when you turn the key. I'm going to show you how I do that, which turned out to be rather easy. You can see how much hydrogen this is producing. This cell is really good. This is this has got 16 plates and they're 8 inches long and 3 inches wide instead of three by six. I've got a new separator spacer now that I'm, I've designed. It's putting the plates a little bit closer together. They're, a le they're closer than an eighth of an inch. You can see this is only drawing uh, eight, eight amps. This is a great cell.